every day. No, I'm totally ready to do a show every day. Let's like, do you think wanna just do twenty minutes, maybe? Like yes. of the biggest stories. Oh the biggest top stories. And we've I talked know. about doing like, you know, different types of shows. Um, but I just feel like we need to see each other every day. I do too, and I'm obsessed with doing this podcast, and it brings me life, and it brings it me does. like honestly too. I mean, just the past like two weeks with everything I've gone through, we've gotten yes. so many sweet messages. Like people have literally brought me through. Yeah. Like I feel like I don't know. I, now I scour the internet, and anything that's wrong with people, I'm like, I'm thinking of you. Like <laughs> it'll get better. I because I want people to know. Like I just want to give it back. No, so true, so true. And it, there's so many sob stories out there as well. Like right now. <sighs> Although we focus on the good, but if you just search one little sad thing in Google, I know everything. Comes well, up. people loved our miscarriage podcast for many reasons. Obviously, many people could relate. The hard part about that podcast episode is, unfortunately, so many people go through it. You know, yes. But then also, people were basically saying only you and AJ could talk about a miscarriage and then transition to like an <laughs> enema and shitting next to a drunk guy in the ER. <laughs> If there's one thing we want to tell you, it is you can always turn a bad story in a negative into a positive. And we fully did. And really, it was just Sarah talking about Jose talking about tequila. <laughs> Poor Jose. Tequila. We have, we, we have to do a follow-up Hola. episode. Hola. Okay, Jose, I need you to just, for like two seconds. Hola. I like that, people love that so that much. That is the classic. Everybody. And the funniest was, I mean, if I wasn't in so much pain loafing, like it was literally the doctors, like they would go through his phone. Hermano, hermano, can you come get Jose? No, sorry, working. <laughs> like, no one, clearly Jose had been there before. Not Poor Jose. Soul wanted to help. I know. They're like, this is a weekly occurrence. We, we know who he is. They went through the sister. They <laughs> went through the brother. Everyone was like, trabajo. I mean, I'm like, what? Okay. Trabajo y muy ocupado. <laughs> Yeah, everyone, everybody. It was That's how Hispanics pop him out so fast because even in his darkest moments, he was ready to get it on I, in the hospital bed. He, oh, he was. He, was he didn't care you were shitting your pants out. No, he was no, like, oh, we're he ready to been go. Completely ready. It was perfect to be oh. next to him because he was unbothered. Not not a, not a thing was getting to him at that di- at that no. point. So people were like uh, loving that. So anyway, I love yeah. Thank you guys. Amazing, amazing. Um, I, also, I wanted to talk about this. I am obsessed with humans of New York. You know this? Um, yes. This it's an Instagram. It's a book. It was like a whole blog at first, right? Okay. So humans of New York, I feel like has had this hot resurgence in the past week, and I wanted to talk about this last week, but you know, obviously life got in the way. Right. So is everybody familiar with? Have you followed Tanga Ray? This this woman who was like a stripper in the seventies worked um, like one time turn tricks. She's this beautiful Wait. black woman. Well, we, we obviously you can follow us on social, and so a lot of the things we'll reference, we'll post on social. So I found it through social, read her whole story because of you. Um, but I need to follow her. Like she has her own Instagram account. Like Does you can she? follow. No, no, I'm just saying. Like, can, how can you follow her story? Well, I don't think you can really. So I. So Humans of New York features her. Okay, and and the first profile they featured was on was like November twentieth, right? Okay. 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 So this was the first one. This is what kicked it off that got people going. So Tangeray. Is, is featured and says, my mom threw me out of the house at 17 for getting pregnant, then had me arrested when I tried to get my clothes. Then she fucked the head of parole to try to keep me in jail. Her mom's a witch. She was some prime pussy back then. But the warden did some tests on me and found out I was smart. So I got a scholarship to go anywhere in New York. I chose the Fashion Institute of Technology, which I hated. But by that time, I was already getting work making costumes for strippers and porn stars in Times Square. All my friends were gay people because they never judged me. All I did was gay bars, drag queen contests, Crisco Disco. I loved the whole <laughs> disco scene. And I couldn't get enough of the costumes. My friend Paris used to sit at the bar and sell stolen clothes from Bergdorf and Lord and Taylor's back before they had the censor tags. <laughs> so I had the best wardrobe. Mink coats, five inch heels, stockings with seams up the back. I looked like a drag queen, honey. One night a Hasidic rabbi tried to pick me up because he thought I was a tranny. This is one of the best parts. I told him, baby, this is real fish. <laughs> This woman, so basically, you know, she's not only gone viral, but people are like demanding that she get a book deal. I'm like, a yes. book deal? I want a documentary. Do- 
everything. These are the people that have the best stories when it's real, real life. That's and why we love documentaries. I am obsessed with yeah. documentaries. This woman needs a documentary. And then the last one that they put up, she basically said that one time she tried to turn tricks with this like guy that owned a department store or ran a high-end department store. Anyway, she ended up not seeing him. Her friend <laughs> started going, I think, to see him. And then the president at the time, so I'm thinking this would have been the 70s. Right. So it would either be Ford or Carter or Nixon. I was going to say Nixon. I think so. I think that's a good guess. It's the only name that I, that I really could think of. <laughs> I didn't know Carter. <laughs> Nixon, yes. <laughs> that, I know that one. Yes. I mean, can you imagine poor Jimmy Carter? I mean, if it's Jimmy Carter out there, because apparently her friend would get paid like an insane amount of money to go to this high-end hotel. The Secret Service would stay outside and then the President of the United States would just like eat her out. Like, the- Which is the best scenario ever. <laughs> right. Oh, you're telling me the President wants to sleep with me, but all he wants to do is eat my V? Like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Spread eagle. I would be like, yes. So Tangare says she won't say which president. But can you imagine sweet Jimmy Carter? I mean, the poor guy's out there building Habitat for Humanity and it's if it's him, well, I this mean, is how he lets loose. That'd he be just a turn of events. <laughs> gobbles it up. Gobbles it up. I'm telling you. That's letting out some steam for sure. Can you imagine? It's the best profile of all time. They Somebody has to be approaching her for a documentary. Oh, yes. If it's not already being done. I know. With with Humans of New York, they started as just going up to look interesting looking people, right? Yeah. Like they didn't know their story. And sometimes they hit the jackpot like this. And I literally heard about him. I mean, I think he's been around for like 10 years now. Did he start as the photographer? Yeah. Okay, so he okay. would go around New York City and just, right, like you said, go up to somebody who looked eclectic and he'd be like, just tell me a story. Tell me about yourself. So people would be, you know, whatever, that. this I'm homeless or you know I like just got my girlfriend pregnant and I don't know so anyway all these people started disclosing and then he's kept at it a book came I don't know if he has a podcast show or like a tour or not but anyway well you know podcast is so kind of like new media I don't sometimes the people kind of rely on he probably the Instagram you know, once we start adding podcasts, it's just like, how much can it's we do? It's a whole other level. It's, like, it's, it's a, you know, that's what I tell people. It's like the book is the coolest thing because you can look at the picture and you can read the story. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can like actually see the person. That's so cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. So anyway, I love that story. And I her name to, is Tankerai. And her stripper name was Tangerai. <laughs> Tangerai. I mean, it's not like so good. I love that. I was just like, wow, that's amazing. She was like early day Cardi B because Cardi comes from like Cartier and Bacardi and her sister's name is Bacardi. Oh, you're like, right. She is. She is Tangeray like Cardi is like B the, before Cardi B. Yeah. Oh, it's so true. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to talk about that, AJ. There's so many stories I want to get to. Uh, people are still talking about the guy who apparently went viral after saying that um, he pays for everything and that his wife pays no bills. Mm. People are like upset about this. Like, uh, let me tell you folks, about 10 years in deep into the working world, I'm ready. Like, if Shman <laughs> wants to come on this podcast and talk about paying all of our bills, I'm well, here for it. It is such a different level. You choose your lifestyle, obviously. And when we're now talking at this day and age, obviously, we ha- women have way more rights. We can vote. We can have jobs. And, you know, there's always going to be that, like, pay disparity. I feel like, guys, men do make more than women. It's just... We're still working on that one. Yeah, okay. I think so too. But um, but yeah, if uh, if a man really wanted to treat me, and not, I'm, I'm open to it. Okay, now I do love doing what I do, and that's like literally why I went into media. But like, I'll save my coins though. I'll he save can pay. my coins and I'll buy my clothes, and he can pay for dinner and everything. My family can't save money for shit. I mean, we're like, oh, let's go to let's go let's go eat. Like we can't pay bills, but like we're let's go eat Mexican food. We're you, like, okay. You guys are out every night, every single night. My mom just like, hey, it's cooking now. She can't see, so she's like the kitchen let's go out i'm like okay so schmiggy it was our three-year anniversary he did pay for the whole weekend oh my god was that what you guys, when you guys went to new york went to new york he got the dinner like everything and 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 you know but i think with you that's you made, pretty amazing when you, whoever makes more money in the relationship i think should pay a little bit more that's what schman and i do yeah. so whoever is like making more than pays more right he's been paying more now for a while and i love it i well, mean i don't really want to go back to the other way no. i'm gonna be honest it's no. amazing he's like taking care of the bills and i like like mostly because i just don't want to do it and like yeah. let's spend his money so he like likes being in charge now of the money and he's like oh i'll figure out the the you know consolidating all of our credit card mm-hmm. debt from the wedding oh and then taking God. on that payment i'm Babe, like you're so amazing honey i could never do it without I could you never make him make him think that i do pulling the weight I do just, just babe I love you for that yeah and mm-hmm. I'm just like wow mm-hmm. I mean just like everything that you do for this family is just I mean <laughs> do you want me to go down on you right now like <laughs> what do you need from me babe yes and please keep it coming you know just like <laughs> the influx of money is always a good thing I know uh Schmiggy always tells me all the tests he's taking yes it's gonna is get you another government pay us. grade yay that's all I'm, that's all I'm saying just pretend you're listening just support him 
pretend. Does Schmeeks listen to this podcast? You know, Schme- I don't think Schmeeks listened in a hot second. Uh, no, because he That's hates good. when when we talk about them. And he's like, oh. do you still talk about me? I'm like, yes. He Then he has banned it. I don't know if his family still. So his mother's best friend from work, she's a, like a longtime listener, didn't realize that her best friend's son's girlfriend was me. So we have all connected. That is crazy. Shout okay. out Colette. Um, so I think that she tells, uh, you know, Schmitz I know his mom a little bit about it and Schman's family listens yes yeah, Schman's family listens I think they do we're not saying bad things we're saying the <laughs> truth <laughs> it's never anything bad so what does this man do okay so does listen he- to this guy okay, insurance for cars I pay for all that but that's what a f-ing man does. oh lord I don't I don't I'm not on no pedestal behind it but that's what a man does a man takes care of his family my wife shouldn't have to worry about a goddamn mortgage payment she had to worry about the lights being on gas being on food in the mother- refrigerator. She don't pay for food. She don't pay for none of that. That's my motherfucking job. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? You don't have to build a pedestal to do that shit. That's what a man do. And a man don't brag about that shit. I'm not bragging uh, It seems all. like he's bragging that's right now. Sir, how many four locos? Eight children and 12 grandchildren. Okay, well, anyway, so people are like all wound up about this and basically are saying that women should make their own money. He's old school. People had mixed reviews. Uh, of course, many shunned him. This man is way too old school. Um... And stating that, you know, women uh, should make equal pay and then also be paying equal in the household. I mean, my thing is always like, I just, women need to like learn how to pay their own bills. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't rely on someone, but if someone wants to do that for you, great. Of course. What was she doing before she found him? Like was she, did she have a job? And also they have eight kids together. I don't know if it's together or whatnot, but regardless, they've got eight kids. She must be staying home with them. I know, That's someone has too. to. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lord, that's a whole circus. I mean, I'm trying to work on having one, let alone eight. Oh, my eight? God. Oh, my God. This is like, this is like Plats- Plattsville. <gasps> Speaking of, absurd. okay, so pe- people really loved um, your impression of Welcome to Plattsville. People really are into the show. A lot of people had not heard about it. It's they absurd. S- they started watching. I watched episode two. Yes. Uh, spoiler alert. So if you don't want to know what's going on, this show is called Welcome to Plattsville on TLC, Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. We're going to do a watch party. We should go live during Plattsville. Plathville? What is Plathville. Plathville. I mean, that's their their last names. The Plaths. Yeah, the Plaths. So it's Plathville. <sighs> Got it, yes. Okay, if we, I mean, what would we do, though, if we had a live party? Because this show is so fucking slow. I mean, you can literally go up, go to the bathroom, and come back, and guess what? And they're, they're just trying to coke. And coke like, again. I mean, they're just, like, it's 11 children, <laughs> uber-religious parents. Yeah. The kids never get out. They don't even know what an iPhone 11 looks like. They've never seen one. They well, don't have the internet. Just like the, the iPhone 7, just bigger, probably. <laughs> <laughs> not missing much and they're literally uh, okay so this episode so episode two mariah she's like the, the really, slut one yes. she's the slut one the that rebel. we love like she's the rebel yeah so she had to get a laundry list done of literally 25 items she had to do all her score <laughs> which the irony of homeschool was she took all the tests and then graded them herself like how do you <laughs> <laughs> wait wait i love it wait <laughs> Dead my serious. mom would love to homeschool she was like i wish i had homeschooled you you would have been so smart and so much more pure i'm like uh and who was going <laughs> grade the check my, my mom never went to college we, we would be on still third grade math graduated without a real ged okay they grade their own papers they grade their own papers so she went through this school book and supposedly took all her quizzes or whatever <laughs> and then her mom's going through and she's like great job and like mariah had already co- like corrected them they were like 93 percent like i'm like bitch mariah you did not get a 93 that she took you could have just take the answer and then just like cheated when you, yeah hit the erase button and then <laughs> added in something else like what mom look i got 100 i aced it this family okay i can't wait we need to yeah we need to do oh. a full coverage of this i mean we have to watch every so anyway so after getting like a million things done right she actually is allowed to go to california with olivia and olivia is like the outcast of the family she married the oldest son she's now introduced the oldest boy to alcohol wait they let her their their mariah go yeah. with olivia yeah which is like the the worst these people have the worst fucking judgment so their 16 year old daughter the first time they're gonna let her be away they're letting her go Slide. on a plane this show is fake the show is so <laughs> fucking staged okay yeah and olivia is gonna be like today <laughs> olivia we're gonna try yeah acid. heroin yeah exactly <laughs> we're gonna do a little bit of edibles I did. okay wait here this take a listen i grew up shoeless we never wore shoes <laughs> okay this is when they never wore now, shoes and it's weird because i either go barefoot or wear heels one or the other on okay. the train there were like a bunch of different kinds of people 
some that were probably on. I had never seen someone quite like that. Someone who's like, what? No, these are just like normal individuals. Her going to California. She's never, so growing up, they never had shoes. Now this I is them arriving. I'm so glad that I only have to share a room with one person because usually I have five other people snoring in the same room. Now you just have one. <laughs> Last and here's night, Olivia. I probably got three hours of sleep because <laughs> the excitement is so overwhelming. All right. And well, she's like totally overwhelmed. Yeah, you. there she is. So they have no shoes. <laughs> they get on a train for the first time and she sees people of different ethnicities and colors and she's blown away. There was all kinds of people. There was a man that was darker than me and I had never seen that before. So that was cool. And what? I never worn shoes before so that was crazy <laughs> what and like her face is so it's like uh, like she can't even believe this is happening dan refuses to watch it he's like this show is so dumb he's like i cannot follow these fucking kids around who like never have done anything he's like it's just so ridiculous it's like child neglect the both of them almost remind me of paris hilton and nicole richie back when like the simple life yes i feel like they're the people i feel like this is like <laughs> simple life 2019 when these people actually are so simple i i we have to keep following this uh, oh, oh we're gonna keep watching every show so it's on on tuesdays people have been watching because of us right um so if you guys like want to chime in with funny moments it it, it is just epic. It's yes. epic. And then I left last night's episode. Apparently, they're going to have a big family reveal. So who knows what that means? And they were, the mom was talking about how she's thrilled that Olivia is away in California because now her son actually like will hug her and interact with her when the like crazy wife is away. <laughs> oh my. So she's like getting rid of one kid to have the other one back, basically. Yes. Just let, she's like, you know what? Mariah's a lost cause. Let's <laughs> just get, get rid of her and Olivia at the same time. Oh my God, in Mexico, uh, people are discussing a 22-foot-tall, 2,000-pound giant sculpture built for, oh my God, is it La Epifania del Senor? La Epifania del Senor Church in Zacatecas. In Zacatecas. Uh, It could set a world record for being the biggest statue in the world of baby Jesus. The problem (laughs) is, people think it either resembles Phil Collins or Nicolas Cage. The statue is a 22-foot, 2,000-pound giant baby Jesus, as I mentioned. What do you think? And what do you think? Nicholas Cage or Phil Collins? What does it look like? I mean, this thing is massive. It doesn't even look... Like you were okay. saying, it doesn't even look Hispanic. Okay. Okay. It is a fish man. The ribs look like it's it's uh, fins. And it, it, it actually... It's Nicholas Cage. Also, it's not even Hispanic looking. Usually, the Hispanic culture, they will do like, you know... La Virgen de Guadalupe, like something that's Hispanic because the, all the people. This is in Zacatecas, okay? This is in the indigenous land. I don't even know where Zacatecas is. And where is it? Their baby Jesus looks a 22 foot inch scary ass <laughs> image of Nicolas Cage. Which, by the way, who would ever choose Nicolas Cage as the baby Jesus? Well, the irony is like you would have beautiful dark eyes. I would think most Hispanic people do. This baby Jesus is like white, like lily white with blue eyes. With like, a mullet. And a mullet. And a mullet. People are tweeting things like, I don't know if something's in the air tonight, but this baby Jesus looks a lot like Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Young Phil Collins with hair. I think it definitely resembles Phil Collins over Nicolas Cage. This is hysterical. So now basically people are saying it's going to become like obviously just like a tourist attraction for people. You guys, it is 22 feet. 2,000 pounds. It's massive. It's not the little baby Jesus they put in the manger. No. Like this is... (laughs) This is... The devil needs to rebuke this. Okay. Oh my God. It arrived with no eye color. I will put all these pictures up on YouTube. It arrived with no eye color. The eyes are completely white like it's like it's a demon child. And it's abs. Like, what is that? That's three nipples. That's, oh that's six boobies. It really is like six boobies. It's not even abs. It is so... And of course, now it's inspiring comparisons with celebrities and all like that. But then it's being um, memed into videos where it like comes out at the top. It's like crazy. This I mean, is an... This is an XO no. This <laughs> Oh my <laughs> All these it's memes like, they make it. Edited into a Power Rangers uh like, the, look, like This needs to be like, Ghostbusters. This needs to be they need a Ghostbuster meme. Now it's in the Lion King. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, people are so creative and so genius. I just freaking love it. Oh God, it's, it's so like, funny. Okay, so in the Mexican culture, they'll make a lot of things with like paper mache. So uh, 
<laughs> it's like not a good oh my god the worst the worst i need to get my family's opinion on this okay <sighs> I, I, um, I need to know what they think too um we have to thank some of our sponsors you guys it's thanksgiving week we are super grateful to our sponsors and thank you guys for going and frequenting them montgomery county mall is awesome they're doing the early bird gets the worm your shopping uh excursion beforehand so if you spend $250 before November 27th, you can go to their concierge desk and you get a $25 gift card. That's all you have to do. There's no other catch. You don't have to sign up for anything. Montgomery County is low, or Westfield Montgomery Mall is located in Bethesda, right there on Democracy Boulevard. They have amazing stores. Absolutely love. We've been there nonstop. We went and visited Santa, who's so cute, so you can bring the kids. So definitely go check them out. Uh, It's Westfield Montgomery. You can follow them on social media, and we're getting ready to launch some awesome awesome prizes and events with them really soon. So be looking for December 3rd. We're going to do a really fun bingo night coming up. Park Potomac, we were also there with AJ. AJ was there the other night at Erwin Gomez Salon until like what, 1 a.m.? Yeah, 1 a.m. Drinking tequila shots. That whole entire crew is a party in a bottle. I I, I was like, you guys, I have to go home. I live in D.C. I don't live in Park Potomac. (laughs) Wish I did because it's a party. It is a partay in Park Potomac. And y'all love Park Potomac. You guys have been there to eat, drink. Uh, you can have your offices. They have tons of condos if you're thinking about moving in the area. It's located right there between Potomac and Rockville, conveniently on 270. It has founding farmers, Addies, Gringos and Mariachis, Sugos, who we love. We love that spot. Um, so many great places. So check out parkpotomac.com as you're doing your holiday shopping this, this winter. And also they have like an Orange Theory. They have yoga classes. Like so many great things happening. Alex Newman is the man. We love Alex and on. They're a husband and wife team for State Farm Insurance. Time to check in on your renter's insurance and your auto insurance. Time to get a quote, actually. Uh, State Farm has some of the best rates for auto insurance anywhere in the DMV. Alex and on got you covered. They have locations in Alexandria, Arlington, and Andale, but they service DC and Maryland. You can just call them for a quick, convenient uh, check in 703 462 8700. Okay, so free consultation always. Just tell them the Hey Fresh podcast sent you. They do everything from financial service consultants uh, as well as life insurance. Um, But a lot of you guys that listen to the show are super young. Everybody needs auto insurance. If you're a renter, uh, of course you need that too. I mean, please, we've all had our places broken into. Your computer's gone and then you're screwed. Don't let that happen. Call Alex Newin today with Alex and on. You can also go to her website, which is always on anh.com. Boom. Um, AJ, I wanted to ask you about this. This Syracuse story has been nuts. You're obviously a Syracuse alum. So go Cuse, go Orange. Four Syracuse University students suspended after racist incidents. Then it looks like there's another 11 students that came from a different college who were also, uh, I guess, letters were sent, or um, and now they're even getting the police involved for hate crimes. So uh, it, it's interesting to me. I guess the N-word had been... Um, yep, racial slurs, uh, a lot of, um, like dorm halls had been uh it was like vandalized and vandalized right and there was a rumor that someone was airdropping like this whole kind of um racist manifesto now that turned out to be complete rumor and police have said that they cannot find one person who received an airdrop you know hate right uh note um but it's bananas there. What's going on over there? Well, a lot of people had sent me articles about it. A lot of my friends are posting and reposting things on Instagram and stuff. And I I, I never experienced anything like this. Syracuse, I, went, I chose Syracuse because of how diverse it is. Right. I mean, they have people from all over the world that come to Syracuse. So for this, this uh, like this is a totally crazy happening. And it's been like 11 different incidents. It's happened over the course of like like a couple months almost. Like, yeah. But really, really recently, a lot of, and they had a, um, a sit-in. They had like a vigil or like a yes. sit they down, recently had a sit-in, yep. Which they posted live, which was um, really cool. I mean, I never felt, I felt unsafe for like the burglaries and stuff, but I never felt unsafe for any type of racial problems. And this is really, really, it's unfortunate. And Kent is the chancellor. He would always, I mean, speak out immediately. And everyone disliked him because he would shut down the parties. So we were like, oh, okay, no one it, likes it. Kent. But like, he really addresses amazingly. And he actually comes from a um, multicultural family. Yeah, right. So, which I didn't even know while I was at Syracuse. But reading all these articles, he addressed it. And he was just like, you know, he had his own problems when he lived in the South. Yeah, yeah. I heard that he was talking about all, all the- these crazy things. So I think it actually hits close to home for him. So I think he's going to take this really seriously. And it, he, you 
you're not gonna be able to stop this overnight. This is like a ongoing, but they arrested four students. Yep. Right. Who were involved in this, which is, I think was, you know, the first step. 14 people total were involved in the incident, 10 of whom were referred for uh, appropriate uh, discipline. Nine were students from other schools that have been uh, referred for discipline for that school. The entire case has also been referred to the county district attorney there. Um, now, also, students did present Ken with a, essentially like kind of a manifesto or whatever of things that they wanted him to change. He addressed a lot of those, but then also said if he could, he cannot make every single change because some of those have to be made through the board. Um, but students had to sit in. So, yeah, it's obviously gotten national attention, but I wonder being an alum. I had never experienced any of this. No racial slurs. I mean, if you look at the percentages, you know, if you're in Greek life, you'll experience a lot of like the white culture, but there's so many different cultures that come to Syracuse, like within Syracuse. It's a very diverse school. And this is really surprising to me. And I just, I can't, I can't believe it. But this is like a warning sign. You know, a lot of times like you'll yeah. go, you'll, which I, I pray to God, there's not a mass shooting, but a lot of times there'll be warnings of this. And I think they really need to address this seriously. But I, I would, I would not feel safe like I'm walking around campus. So freaking blown away by the ignorance, you know, yeah, and for yeah. young people, right? I right. mean, fourteen people like doing that, and they're almost saying like it was kind of this like white supremacist sect, yes. which is like right. so, you know, I mean, not shocking because we we have seen it over the past couple of years. But I think to to see it on a prominent college or university like that is is disheartening really yeah. disheartening I, I i cannot believe it's involved around syracuse i could see a school in the south right we still have problems down there but this is a northern school uh, uh, very north i i'm so surprised and i'm i hope they're able to deal with this because I, i'll feel like to be not proud to even like have been uh, i won't even say i'm an alumni anymore because <laughs> it's like this becomes a normal thing I can't imagine that it was. I mean, the chancellor seems like he's right on it. The board he has is. to be concerned. I right, mean, right. yeah, they're getting the district attorney involved. I would hope serious action. Serious action coming to Cuse. I mean, they, they usually do address things pretty fast. So, I mean, they shut a party down in like three, three seconds. So they really should be on this. Okay. So, you know, sign or resign. They should be able right. to sign. Okay. They should be right on it. They should be right on it. So, um, all well wishes to Syracuse. That's my school. So, um, yeah, we hope they can figure that out. Because. Um, well, cu- like doing a complete 180, which is what, which we, is always what we always do on this show. Apparently, micro penises are going to be in for 2020. <laughs> did, you, did you see this? <laughs> okay, this I cannot the sign. Micro Schween. This we, one I cannot sign a petition for. Well, we have to because every time we talk about small penises, like we have to do an entire show. I need a sex expert on that can talk about this because yes. every time we talk about this, we get so many men that go, I am 35 years old. I haven't had sex in 10 years because okay. I have a three inch penis. Right. Is that erect? Erect. Okay. And I like need support. Like I'm too afraid. And I'm like, oh my God, like get out there. And I don't know. Can't you be funny? I would just be like, look, I've got the world's smallest dong. And are you ready to see it? Get ready. Okay. Are you ready for for this advice? What? Become a stand-up comedian. Okay. I'm not talking from experience here because I can't even get up on stage every week. But no, let me tell you, you just need to be honest, confident, and just be ready to just eat box a lot, okay? Because any yes. woman will love a funny man who eats box regularly, and she will not give a damn. Most of the time, we don't even really need the D penetration. I don't know. We got to get Soy Saucy on because Soy Saucy. Okay, she would be like, literally don't even come to feet within me with a three-inch dick. <laughs> but I'm like, you will find so many women that will love it. You will. I, I would think so too. Daily Dot sex therapist Elizabeth McGrath says in 2020, men are going to own their micro penises. As she says, more and more men are speaking up that they have a small penis. And on average, five inches or less is like average. So it's like, a, yes, that's, you know, we think that everybody has these major schlongs, right. but they don't. They don't. Um, People, they say, McGrath says that um, good sex happens in many, many different ways, that men need to rock their micro penis. And she also says that a lot of women enjoy it. For somebody with a micro penis or their partner, um, it, it's great because it fits into your box very uh, without any pain. Very Mag- nicely. McGrath goes on to suggest that sex is better, but unfortunately, it wasn't because of penetration. As a result, she encourages you to explore other venues and offer having a smaller penis allows you to be more adventurous. She also says, like, you can be more adventurous whether you're like trying backdoor action or whatever because like obviously huge penises can cause an issue for some other things oh yeah no 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 you can't even come close to my back door if we're looking at five inches nope i mean Mm-mm. if you're like our friend fred smoot who apparently has a one pound dick he compares it to like what a, a block of meat i mean yeah he's like it's a baby's forearm you know like it's, it's like 
I'd be like, that's why I'm always like, deuces. Like, get a... No. I mean, that's a lot. Of, you don't want that in a lot no, of places. No. You know, the no. mouth aches, all the all the crevices ache, you know, but not with the micro penis. And that could be your lead in. That's what she's saying. She's like, a micro peen is less painful and women enjoy it. I don't know if you should be open up front about it, but I would say like within the, like the second or third date, if you guys are going to have sex, I'd just be like, hey, look, be very open, be honest. <sighs> that is a tough one though. What do you it? say? You make it funny. You, you make need, it funny. If I you know. need a one liner from me, well, give me a week. I'll write some up for you. Okay, do that because um, it can't be the only thing, you know. Because I mean, lots of people have herpes now. Lots of people have HPV. Before you're like having sex, you're hopefully you're giving people warnings. I mean, well, a lot of people are not even like talking about it before I know. they're I just, walking into bed. But I just did another friend call me, and they said that they had gonorrhea or something. Okay, yeah, we know this person mutually. Do we? We don't. Oh, I can't wait to turn these cameras off. We need to be talking to T. Oh, shit. Who has gonorrhea? This person had to get treated. They said, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is some hot tea, y'all. See, I love when we have these talks. She just brought this. I love when she, like, realizes to tell me something. And she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this person has gonorrhea. I'm like, what? Why didn't you? Why didn't I? Why didn't I walk why through the door? And you tell them? me. Yeah. I know. I know. No, wait till I tell you too. It's Joe's site. It's Joe's site. I can't believe it. I know. Oh my god. I don't okay. miss that stuff. You know, like I don't miss the scares. You know, I like having one schween. Uh, yes, that's I'm. I, I'm one dick dolly, and I enjoy it. Well, good because you're married, <laughs> so you're taken. Okay, one dick dolly. Thanks. I am one dick dolly, and I like it. I mean, I have five jobs. I can't really keep up with five dicks. It would just be a lot. I don't have time for all that. Well, I'm. Mean, I'm sort of like you know. I'm kind of losing it because I can't have sex for two weeks. So because of my procedure, right, so right. I am like going crazy. Oh like, really? Yes. I like, thought you were going to say the opposite. Like you, you. Uh, have to, you no, you, I'm super horny. When's the last time Schman and I have not had sex? Like we even had usually two you're... weeks. This feels like eternity. <laughs> okay, you guys can explore other things, right? He can do other things well, to you. Not really. Like I'm not supposed to have a lot of action down there. Okay, are you like a tit stimulation <laughs> woman? Oh, it leads up to nothing. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, well, you should use this time, and you should pleasure him. Great. <laughs> Our sales lady Liz was like, we went to the wine store. She was like buying her husband all this wine. She's oh, coming yeah. to make dinner. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, maybe you could just use this week to just like pamper Dan. All right. You know what? Maybe I'll work on that. I'm just feeling very selfish. I'm like, <laughs> what in the like, world? Two, two weeks? weeks? My pussy's got to shrivel up. <laughs> exactly. My pussy is shriveled up. I hate winter. <laughs> It's speaking of shriveled V. It's a winter pussy, and it is shriveled. Winter is coming. What is yours? Yours should be getting so much action. No, I get action, but just like it's so cold. I mean, my hands are already just like looking oh, like an eighty-year-old woman. Is the like, badge dry too? Like everything every- is shriveled. Like it's just like crunching up, just like the the <laughs> the wind on my face. I'm just like eh. I'm just like a permanent eh. I know we're permanent prunes. Eh. Like hi, I'm a walking raisin. Yes, I, it's I what, know. Although I, I I love New York. On I mean, I just need to bundle bundle up. I guess. Oh, it's the worst this time of year. It's so cold. It's Get so your long cold. undies I'm out. Not- for real one drink is a jacket that's the rule ladies Ooh. uh we always end the show on uh, mondays with pineapple mail which is always like your calls your feedback your thoughts i loved this from phil phil said sarah thank you for continuing to share your story sad to hear what you experienced with a miscarriage but i'm the sixth child in a family of eight four girls and four boys my mother had me when she was 38 and then my mother was 42 when she had my youngest sibling a brother keep the faith i know it will happen for you and schman that's I'm incredible also a fellow Mainer and really enjoy your main family stories. I'll Maya. have a lot over Thanksgiving. So thank you. I got so many of these. It's so great to hear people's like partial molar stories, molar stories. Then they went on to like have babies. Like people even, because the craziest part about a molar pregnancy is in rare, rare, rare cases. It can act like a cancer, but it's basically treatable. It's 100% treatable by oral chemo, but it's still like a process. Of course. So like the most amazing feeling is like people like oh I even like had to go through like oral chemo then I went on to have this healthy healthy baby you're like oh there's hope so that you was know? like even one of the worst case scenarios ended yeah. up into a positive we love it I, so anyway for anyone that's out there trying don't give up I, re- I got a lot of messages from you guys that have been trying for a year don't stop I mean people were trying people have had four or five miscarriages six miscarriages then went on to have their yes people have shared been unbelievable in sharing their stories I know so and they were like uh, hey I had five miscarriages I miscarried my twins then I I mean people miscarrying at 20 weeks then I went on to have a healthy baby so the point I don't want to get you like down or, or worried that are listening but the point is to basically say don't give up 
faith because people are having healthy pregnancies. These are why the story to share stories is so important because you can share experiences and then you realize there's always hope. It's just like a real bitch though. I mean, aren't we like supposed to procreate? Why is it so, I mean, well, I can go into this. I mean, my mother Get Carol your has. Hat. What's Carol think? What is it? Just like new age? Like it's we're new age. inundated it's, with chemicals yes, or what? Like birth control. And I know a lot of you. That she's a home remedy woman. Okay, so don't don't come at me after this. She thinks that birth control sterilizes you. Birth control sterilizes you, or it just irregulates yourself. So when you like an influx of. Um, like hormones and as soon as you stop taking you forget to take the pill you become pregnant i mean it's so easy to get pregnant when you stop taking the pill uh but she thinks it's just uh, all the chemicals um everything we're using nowadays cell phones even she'll connect that to something i'm sure like the the, the radio we waves get her on the podcast and just let her she rant. has so many beliefs um yeah just all the, the patches the inserts tampons she's like it's not healthy i'm like well look i'm not walking around with a pad and vagina blood all over me no so i use tampons and she's she, like she don't even it. put a tampon in she's like she's you like, shouldn't be inserting anything in your vagina yeah, she's like what do you think they did in the cave men days i'm like well they died at 30 okay because they got hit by a rock yeah i mean you had to have a child at 12 <laughs> like you were going to be dead in 10 years like <laughs> okay she's not an anti-vaxxer but for the for the hpv and all of that stuff i think she was very weary of it but um yeah i'm gonna delete a lot a lot of this so <laughs> You guys are amazing. We are here Thanksgiving week. Uh, Wednesday show, we have some giveaways that we're going to do blowing out into the holiday. Um, I know. So amazing. Okay, Age. We're out of here. Love you, girl. Love you, Anything else? What are we, what are we, I mean, I'm getting more like, what's going on? No, Thanksgiving. We're just getting ready. We're getting in the holiday spirit. Okay, I need need to hear your Thanksgiving stories. We'll hear that on Wednesday. Okay. Bye, everybody. Hey, friends, I like it.